Hello and welcome to The Real Entrepreneur Hustle with me, Steve Woody. In this series, I'm gonna be talking about all of the hype and BS, debunking a lot of the rumors and myths around entrepreneurship and around the struggles that some of these small business owners stroke entrepreneurs have in a day-to-day life. And we see this all the time on social media. You see companies or sponsored ads or people who are advertising how to make six figures in six minutes or the latest thing that's gonna change your life. And I just wanna give you a, an insight into my perception and my reality around with what I do to hopefully help you. The reason I wanna do this is because I'm kinda of sick and tired if I'm honest with you. I've seen so many people that come to me now saying, oh, I've been burnt here, or I've been screwed over there, or this didn't work and that didn't work, and what do you think of this? And so for me to be able to create this little mini-sodes or this little mini-series, then hopefully you could take something away and use that. So I'm gonna keep them to about 20 minutes in length because I know as entrepreneurs, right, we're busy. I'm busy, you're busy. You don't wanna to listen to me ramble too much. So I wanna try and give you some real information that you can take away and some things that you can adapt and you can use in your business right now. And also, obviously, I wanna make sure that we have a chance to let these go out and to resonate with people because I can say the same thing over and over and over again, but if people aren't taking action, you know, knowledge is only potential power. You can only do so much of what you know. You need to actually take action and implement and apply the things that you're learning. So I don't want to overwhelm. I don't want to go through too much. I want to keep it really simple, really straightforward, and hopefully together we can create a better community and a better environment for entrepreneurs, specifically startups and people who are coming into the industry. So all I'm going to say right now is that I have had the privilege and pleasure of traveling from the depths of hell right up to the pearly gates. And in that journey, I've experienced extreme pain and hardship and some euphoria along the way as well and some really great times. So I feel like I'm justified somewhat to give my opinion and to give my uh, what my beliefs over what I think uh, is right and wrong and uh, what I think uh, applies to people and what you should watch out for. Now, obviously, I just want to pre-frame this with take what works. You know, don't listen to me on every single thing I say. Take what works, apply it to yourself, and everything else, just let it go. Everyone's got an opinion, and it doesn't mean that everyone's right. You need to do what's right for you. And, of course, I don't know you yet, so I can't actually help you past asking you some more questions and hopefully just giving you some more generic advice that you can take away. And So I just want you to understand that. The big thing with me and what I want to do is I want to understand that you can use my experiences and my journey and my knowledge and my expertise and the things that I've understood to stop you making the same mistakes. That's the end goal. That's the outcome here. Look, I know I'm going to be successful because I'm running out of things to do wrong. I've done everything wrong. And as a result, you know, I've experienced, as I said, a lot of pain and I don't want you to go through that. So just to give you a quick background so you understand. I'm ex-forces. When I left the army, I was homeless three times. I lived in a car for six months. I went bankrupt with a gambling addiction. Uh, I got divorced and I was started this year 50 grand in debt. So that just is a brief like, bah. on the other side of it, I've worked with multi-million pound companies. I've worked with some phenomenal people. I've got a client at the moment who's generated over half a billion in his lifetime. And so all of those things, along with the fact that I can do a Facebook Live and generate 30K in profits, I've written an international best-selling book which has been translated to many languages. I've got lots of online courses and I've learned a thing along the way. And so as a result, because I've done so many different things, I've got this broad horizon and I can pull from that uh, at several different um, Time, or episodes of my timeline where I can say, do you know what, at this point in my life this happened, or in this point in my life that happened, or because I did this, this happened. And you can use that to hopefully either help you or stop you from experiencing some of the sort of pain. So, with that said, today and for this month, the whole focus is going to be around the money mindset. Now, money is something that I had, had remember my language, this is one of the key things to take away, is how you talk to yourself and about yourself, the problems that I had with money throughout my entire adult life caused me a lot of pain, suffering, and challenges. As a result, it really damaged my self-worth. Uh, I suffered with what I believe is something called imposter syndrome. I would self-sabotage myself so that I wouldn't be too successful because I didn't want all of the, uh, the pain that I'd attach to that. So as a result, I know what it's like to not have money, but I also know what it's like to have money. And if you're trying to earn money to solve some problems, let me just tell you now that money doesn't solve problems. Money solves a select uh, 
specific sort of problem, but it gives you a whole load more. There's a lot of problems that come with having money. There's a lot of problems that come without having money. And to be honest, given the choice, I'd rather deal with the problems when I've got money because it makes it easier, it's more enjoyable. But there's still problems. So you need to understand that problems are always here. They're not going away, they're here to stay, and you need to learn to deal with them. How you become better than your problems, how you overcome, like when I have a problem, I'm like, it's a problem, it's a challenge, I'll deal with it. I am bigger than anything in front of me. That's why I know I'm gonna be successful. I'm like a donkey, put a problem on my back and I'll just keep on walking. So what I want you to understand and what I want you to grasp from this is that it's okay to have problems. It's okay to even be in a bad place. If you've got stuff going on, if you're stressed and you're overwhelmed and frustrated and feel like you just don't understand and don't know and it's like, I just why can't I make money? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? You know, it's like when you type into Google, why can't I? Google will tell you why you can't. But if you type into Google, how can I? It'll tell you how you can. So it's the type of question. So first is the language. You need to understand the language that you're using around your business and specifically the language that you're using around money. I mean, do you like money or not? Are you for or against money? And I'm gonna dive into this a little bit later. I'll give you a real example of how language can have a huge impact. It's the biggest thing when I deal with my clients, depending on how they perceive money. And it's in one of two ways, and I'll go through that in a moment. But language, that's really important. And the second one, obviously, as I've just mentioned there, like once you've understood the language, once you know what you're saying and why you're saying it, you need to look at the impact that those words have on you. You know, how you're like relating yourself to that situation, to the money situation. Like if you think of money and you get really stressed and anxious and worried and oh, you know, and, and angry and all of that frustration, then of course you're not gonna have a good relationship with money. So you need to learn how to overcome that, how to deal with that, and how to put processes in place, because at the end of the day, the biggest thing around money is cash flow. All right, it's not about how much money you've got in the bank, it's not about how much money you earned last week, it's not about what your last sale did, it's about how much money comes in and how much money goes out. And so you're always gonna have money coming in, you're always gonna have money going out, and you just need to make sure there's more coming in and going out, it's cash flow. That's all, it's as simple as that. So if you can understand that, you're ahead of the game. Very good friend of mine, Derry, Derry Apple Allen Davison, and if you can type that in the text below, then fair play to you, because he's Welsh and I can't. Uh, but he's a good friend of mine, and I did his uh, certification program to be a, become a coach, consultant, and a mentor. And I did that because I wanted to step up my business. And as a result, Derry taught me something which is pivotal, absolutely pivotal to business, and it's so simple. And he says that in business, you have one of two problems. This is it, there are two problems in business, that is it. You will either have a cash problem or you will have a talent problem. Cash or talent. If you have a cash problem, then you cannot afford the right people to work in your business. And if you have a talent problem, then you're not gonna have the right people to earn the money that you need to earn. And it's a catch 22. So how do you get the cash? You need the talent. How do you get the talent? You need the cash. So for a lot of entrepreneurs, when you start out, you start out on your own. You know, you look at how do I do everything myself? I need to register my own company, I need to look at my brand in myself, I need to build my own website, I need to do this and that and market and sell and promote and be serviced and deliver and everything else and it just becomes overwhelming. And so you start looking for talent. The problem is because you don't have the money, you start bringing in the bad, wrong or you know, not, not the best talent to help you either friends or family or, or you know people on a low wage and so as a result the message you start putting out into the world isn't necessarily the message that you want to put out into the world and so it's very very important to understand and to realize that you need the right people and that could be through JVs you know I've done some fantastic things where I've built websites for people in return for other services and as a result of that it's allowed me to step up to earn more money to save that money and then reinvest that money into the business to bring in more people to do more things. Now I've got a phenomenal team behind me and we get amazing things done. But it takes that sort of learning curve at the beginning to overcome those hurdles, to find people who are aligned, who have similar values to you, who want to solve similar problems in the world and who uh, know, like, and trust you and, and, and trust and believe in what you're doing and have the passion. Because nobody's gonna like or love your business as much as you do. Okay, whatever you're doing, that's what you're doing and no, no one ever will. You know, it's like having a child. No one's ever gonna love your child as much as you love your child. So you really need to understand that your business is like your child and you need to nurture it. And you just need to accept and understand that no one else is gonna give it the same as what you do. Oh, very rarely anyway. So my point is this. When you are starting out, you need to understand. I talked before, and I'm gonna come back to this now, about the language that you use. 
Now the language that you use is so important because let's just take websites for example, because this is my field of uh, expertise and my speciality specifically around online business. When people normally come to me and they say, I need a website, it's the first thing they say. And I'm like, great, show me your business. Because if you don't have a successful business or you don't have a business with the potential for success, then we build you a great website, it's not gonna work. It's gonna cause you problems. It doesn't matter how good the website is, you know, if the products and services are shit, then you're gonna struggle. So you need to understand that you've got the right systems in place, but also the right product service, the right marketplace. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts to make sure that a business is successful. And you may get lucky, but at the end of the day, you need to understand that when you're starting out, you can't rely on luck. You need to test. And this is why I go back to what I said at the beginning, I don't know what I'm doing. And when I say that to clients, when I say, look, I don't know what I'm doing, it's because you can take something that worked. You can take something for somebody else. You can take something that, um, that has worked in the past or is working for other people. But in your marketplace, with your knowledge, with your product, with your lifestyle, with everything that's going on in, in this time right now, there is no guarantee that what worked for someone else is going to work for you. So the only way to get results is to test. You need to test, you need to get data, and you need to analyze, and you need to adapt to that data. So when I say I don't know what I'm doing, what I'm referring to is until we've got data, I can't make an informed decision. So the first thing that I wanna do in any business is get data. How can we attract as much data as possible to make informed decisions, so that we're not basing things off of luck? Now, what's really important, and coming back to the language, is when you start out, a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm not saying all of them, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying a lot of entrepreneurs, when they come to me, they look at things um, as a cost. Now, this is a challenge, and the reason this is a challenge, because if you listen to Robert Kiyosaki, and he wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he talks about the cash flow quadrant and how things are either assets or liabilities. So if you buy something like a car, and it's, a, it's an asset, it's a liability, unless you're using it for something like Uber, where you're actually making money from it, then it becomes an asset. Anything that generates you income is an asset, anything that costs you money is a liability. Most people buy a house because they think it's an asset, but a house is actually a liability in terms of, it costs you money to run a house, there are running costs. So what you need to understand is that a website, if you're looking at it as a, a, an asset or a liability, your website should be an asset. It's an asset to your business. It should generate you income. And so what you need to understand is that with any asset, the most important thing to understand is what is the return on your investment? Now that's the key word and that's what I really want you to take away from this whole video, investment. You look at things as a cost, they're gonna cost you money. You look at things as an investment and you're always gonna be looking at how do I get my return? How do I get the return on my investment? When it's a cost, you spent it, it's done. If you have a cost for a website, then you paid for your website, it's done. And the problem is now you're not gonna be looking at how do I get my return on my investment? How do I now use my website to make me money? And so in business, everything that you spend money on should be looked at as an investment. How is this an investment? So if I'm going to buy the latest iPhone, how is that an investment? Well, for me, it's an investment because I can use it as an asset to create a series of videos. It is now going to be used to record videos. Those videos are gonna be used in the sales letters. Those sales letters are gonna sell me courses. So if a phone costs me 500 pounds and I know that I can sell a product for 100 pounds, I need to sell five products to break even on the cost of the phone. So there I know how many products I need to sell, how much the phone cost me. I'm gonna sell one a week. So that means that to break even, to get a return on my investment, it's gonna take me five weeks if I'm recording five, and do you see what I mean? Do you see how you can start to get into this mindset? So I really want you to understand this is all about mindset. The more successful you want to become, the more you will have to get out of your own way. Because most people, the, the, the biggest journey they will take on their entire business journey is from here to here. It is that journey in your mind, through your head, that is the biggest journey that most people take. And when you can overcome the story and some of the situations and things that you tell yourself, it'll help you. You know, there are people who have been telling me for a long time that I need to charge more, I need to charge my worth, I need to do things. And when I left the army and I was a lorry driver, I was only 10 pounds an hour. I mean, I used to earn a lot more than that with overtime, but when the EU opened up and, and the Polish people come in and took the driving jobs, and look, I don't knock it, I'm not knocking it at all. It's just the economy, it's the world, it's the way it works. But my wages went from earning 500 pound a week to 350 pound a week, overnight. Literally, because it was supply and demand. I used to be able to walk into any yard and say I've got my HGV, I want a job, and that day I would be working. 
Now, if I go into a, a, a trucking yard, I'd have to queue up and fill in applications and there's just an abundance of drivers. And so you have to understand it's all about supply and demand. And so for me right now, when I look at things, what is the supply and what is the demand? Now, when I started out my career as a website designer, my entrepreneur journey, I was charging out 10 pound an hour. I then started charging out 20 pound an hour and I had a, a meeting with a coach who told me I should be charging out a lot more. He actually told me I should be charging 100 pound an hour and I laughed. I said, I don't value myself like that. I don't see myself as being worth £100 an hour. The irony behind this is that I started working for a great guy called Christopher Adams, who actually hired me to work on his website and the website of his clients. And he was charging me out at £100 an hour. And what I didn't realise is that he saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And as a result of that, he was more than happy to charge me out because he knew the value that I was delivering. See, this is the most important thing about your worth. With your products or your services, you don't determine the price. You, you can sit there and say, oh, I charge this or I charge that. If, you're worth ten, if you think you're worth £10,000 an hour, that's fantastic and I commend you for that. But if no one's paying it, you're not worth it. You're only worth what the marketplace is prepared to pay. And that all comes down to what's called perceived value. Whatever the perception of the value is that you're creating. That's why people can sell handbags for hundreds of thousands of pounds. You know, one of the people that I was looking to work with sold a bottle of champagne for $290,000. It's the perceived value of something. It's how you attach it. It's how you position yourself. It's your brand. It's your advocates. It's your marketing. It's your messaging. It's all of the things. It's how well you can articulate the problem, the pain, and your solution. How quickly and easily can you solve somebody's problem? What value do you deliver? How do they perceive that value? Because that is what you charge for. That is what people pay for. And that's what allowed me to jump from my 10, 20 pound an hour up to 50 pound an hour because I understood that. And I had a really interesting conversation with a seven year old. I was in Oxford and I was around a friend's house and his seven year old turned around to me and said, why do you charge 50 pounds an hour? He'd overheard a conversation with me. I was telling someone my rates and he you know, inquisitively said, why are you charging 50 pounds an hour? He said, if you charge 60 pounds an hour, that's a pound a minute. And this was a seven year old. And I couldn't argue with him. It was great logic. I was like a pound a minute. That makes sense. I like that. So I upped my rates to £60. And do you know what? People carried on paying it. No one questioned it. And what I realised in that moment is I'd actually been undervaluing myself all that time, charging less for my services, doing things for free to try and build in rapport with people, testimonials and case studies. And there's a better way to do things. If you want to work for free, that's great. But you still need to get something from it. You need to get a case study. You need to get factual proof that what you've done's worked because you shouldn't give your time away for free. And that allowed me to jump from 60 to 120, 120 to 250, up until last weekend when somebody quoted me, for, uh, sorry, not quoted me, but somebody asked me if I could help them. They said, I've got an emergency in my business. I need you, I need you to come in, I need you to help me fix this. And I was like, great, it's a Saturday. I'm, I'm out, I'm doing things, I'm working with my business, I'm having some social time. It's a thousand pounds an hour. That's my SOS rate. If you want me to come into your business right now, drop everything and fix things for you, then that's my rate. And I can comfortably, comfortably charge that knowing that I deliver exceptional value. Me and my team are fantastic at what we do. But it didn't happen overnight. I didn't just wake up one day and say, this is my rate, this is what I charge. And there's a lot of people, 99% of people will look at me and go, I'm not paying that. Great, because I would rather be working on my business than someone else's. And so you have to understand, what do you do? Where is your value? Where are you best served? How can you position yourself to get that perceived value? How do you talk to yourself? When you're looking at your money mindset, how are you valuing yourself, your time and what you do? Because look, money we can earn. You can earn a pound and if you can earn a pound, you can replicate it. And if you can replicate it, you can scale it. So money you can always earn, but time once it's gone, it's gone. We have a limited amount of time and you have to use it wisely. We all have the same amount of time in a day. It's just how we use it and how we utilize other people's time to help us to achieve more. If you look at someone and go, wow, they're so successful, they're doing so well, it's because they're leveraging their money to get other people to use their time to allow them to create more. So there's a lot of things for you to consider. Now, what I would like to do, because I said I'm going to keep this to 20 minutes, is offer you the opportunity to get a free worksheet. 
I've been to a lot of events, I've been to a lot of seminars, and as a result, I understand. I know what it's like, and so I don't want you to go through the same problems I've been through. As a result, what I've done, I've created a worksheet, and you can use that worksheet, if you would like, to help you understand some of the money limitations, some of the things that might be holding you back. If you've got any issues around money, if you're not earning what you're worth, if you're not charging what you're worth, if you're struggling with cash flow, anything like that, which may be a challenge for you at the moment, then I urge you to just click on a link in the comments to have a look at that worksheet. Download the worksheet, make sure you get yourself a copy of it, fill it in. Now, there's a reason I'm asking for your email address for this is because I want to hold you accountable. Because you saying you're going to do something is great, but I don't know you're going to do it. And the only way I can track to see whether you're doing it, to hold you accountable, is to actually get you to commit to me when you're going to do something. And by committing to me and saying you're going to do something, I can then hold you accountable, make sure that you do it. Because when you do that, when you make a plan, that's great. But when you actually make, make it accountable, when you take action in that plan, when you tell somebody else about that plan, that allows you to move forward. And it allows you to move forward faster. So the idea is to hold accountable, to have a plan, to have a date, to have an outcome, to put all that together using this worksheet. It's only a few pages. It won't take you long. It'll take you five, 10 minutes to fill in. But by doing that, it's going to allow you to look at what you can do right now in your business to create investment opportunities. Not cost, not what you need to spend money on, not what are costs, but what are investment opportunities that can take you to the next level. I hope this has been valuable. If you think this relates to anybody, please tag them below. I would love it if you could share this. Let other people know. Let me know. Put in the comments below. Tell me some of your money issues. Some of the things that have held you back. Some of the things that have challenged you. Some of the things that have stopped you getting to where you want to be. And then how have you overcome them? Or what are you doing right now to overcome them? And I'll make sure I continue to share things with you so I can help you to get further, faster in your business to allow you to enjoy the life that you really want. My name's Steve Woody. This is the Entrepreneur Hustle Series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again very soon.